No name above your name. No name above. Katapana. Katapalade. My Lord and God. My Lord and my God. My Lord. My God. Somebody lifts up those. Jesus. My righteousness. My Lord and King Jesus My righteousness Jesus My Lord The Lord The Lord The Lord The Lord The Lord The Lord my God The Lord The Lord my Creator The Lord The Lord my Defender The Lord The Lord my Refuge The Lord the beginning and the end Masada da 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 Radoka tala de 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 Makosa da 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 Hila da 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 Makosa da 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 Hila da Of ages, Lord, you are the Alpha in our families. 
Lord, you are the Alpha in our lives. Lord, you are the Alpha in our marriages. Lord, you are the Alpha in our places of work. You're the reason why we cry out your name. sensitive to your leading 
let this moment be the moment that will turn around our lives glorify your name align us to your will and your purpose align us to your call to your voice O king of glory in the name of jesus amen let's have our seats please Uh, get your book, get your Bible, get your pen. And get your spirit ready. Because this is one of those classes that no one in this camp misses. Ministers, please tell people out there especially ministers to be in this class because if you miss this class you may miss the whole camp sound team please make my microphone a bit low and clear we're gonna have a moment of learn, learning the principles of consecration. Amen. Amen. Can you please put my monitors a bit low? Bring them down and make the house a bit louder. Maybe I need to come and do my settings there. Amen. 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 Let's open our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 4. To Guru Bible is a fee. The book of Genesis chapter 4. And um, it's a story about two brothers. Someone said, "Blood, blood, brothers." It's a story about Genesis chapter four. It's a story of two blood brothers. Same father, same mother. Tata yomu, mama yomu. Same bloodline. Cain and Abel. Kaini ne Aberi. Someone said blood brothers. Gamba Buruganda Musai. Someone said blood battles. Gamba in Talizom Musai. So blood battles begin in Eden. And there were battles of sacrifice. The contention. Uh, I don't know. The contention was about sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Can we pray for the sound team? Everybody on sound team, come up here. Walk here. I want to pray for you. Please come here. I want to bless you. Sound team, please come here. Come stand here. We pray for you. Because the only gate that's not manned is the sound gate. Come, we are not condemning we want to bless you where is Francis come we want to bless you because we, I think that gate we did not take care of it come my son here come here Django, Django. 
Church, let's raise our hands and speak into their lives. First, speak a prayer of repentance. Just repent, everyone in the church. Ask God to forgive. I don't hear you. Ask God to forgive. Will repent their sins. And the sins in their bloodlines. Father God, have mercy. Have mercy upon these families. Have mercy upon them, Lord. Forgive us for not watching over them. Forgive us for not caring. Forgive us for not watching and protecting them. I pray in the name of Jesus that today, Father, the blood of Jesus cleanse them from bloodline and entanglement in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak well of them. I release them into their destiny. I pray that Lord you put skill on their lives. I separate them from the spirit that caused fear. We declare them blessed right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We bless you. It's nice. We thank the Lord. Amen. You know, such ministries, such messages, it's a warfare. It's a warfare. And I believe those gatekeepers that are guarding the gate of sound need to be covered need to be protected in the name of Jesus. So I was talking about Genesis chapter 4. Now if you can see the pattern from Cain and Abel to Isaac and Esau to Jacob and huh? Isaac and Ishmael Jacob and Esau it confirms what Jesus said a man's enemy will be where a man's enemy will be his, in his house. Now, many of us, when we talk, and when I'm talking about blood battles, now, what I'm meaning, or what I'm, I need to bring to your attention, is household wickedness. Household wickedness. Battles in the blood battles through the blood do you see the pattern we see Abel and Cain what were, what were they fighting for what was the issue of Cain spiritual superiority because the battle was not about land the battle was spiritual access mm, you haven't what I said the issue was access so they were bring sacrifices and Cain discovers Abel has had access Mm? these are two brothers same blood but now one of them realizes he has no access and the battle begin there you know you can fight battles <laughs> but household battles you imagine the witch destroying your life when it is your husband the father of your children you imagine the destroyer of destiny is your twin sister twin sister 
One day I saw wickedness I've never seen. Orumu nalabo bubi we nalisi da banga. They called me to pray for a, a, a young woman. Bampita okuit okusabiro mukazi. Her family here in the city. Family here mu chibuga. They had taken her from the city and took her down in the village in Chiboga and hide her there. And so one of the cousins came to me and took me to pray for her. She, was, she had become mentally ill completely off she could undress herself run naked and I began praying for her and as I was praying for her I had not known that she was a twin but as I was praying for her I had the, a twin talking and I said What's going on? So I began dealing with blood covenants. And I realized that I was a spirit in her. But it was so attached to her. And it was a human spirit. Not a demon spirit. Not an evil spirit. But a human spirit. And I began searching what is this spirit. And that spirit was the Nakata spirit that twin sister so I asked the person who what's going on he said pastor James you can't believe to, to, tomorrow tomorrow morning that, that was in the midnight we are praying he said tomorrow morning her twin sister Nakato Nakato was marrying half this one's husband. I said, I don't understand. He said, Yes. The wedding is tomorrow. This was what this woman was married to a man. She got mental illness. The family decided family to move her from the, from, the, from the city because she was a disgrace. And they want to hide her somewhere there. And somewhere, somehow, the family decided family that the, her twin sister takes over the marriage. I said, mm. it's suspicious. You know, my, <coughs> my way of life everyone is a suspect <laughs> every human being is a suspect yes every human being including my wife including the one who interpreted me no that's my training everyone is a suspect and and the obvious is not a suspect. Ate oyogolo wasn't when Nandi kenge that we sekenge da. That we when people say this must have done that. Oh no, we are going to take away your My sense tells me the one who no one thinks has done it. Oh no, ah ah mani gwalo zanti achikoze achikoze. The one they don't they think they don't think is the one. We better go waza. Is the one I watch. Ate oyogwe negende reza. When when we are chas when they are chasing a thief, the one who chases faster oh, is a suspect. The one saying, "Obubi, Obubi, Obubi," the thief, the thief. I can tell Olimu Moleke. And I say, leave that one. Oh no! But this one. Why is <laughs> Why is he so much after that? Is he trying to destroy evidence? Is he chasing the thief or is then the thief run faster? Oh, Let me obstruct this. That's my training. So every time you talk, you say. Oh, Pastor James. Zuma James. I love you so much. My training tells me oh. <laughs> you are for evil. Since when you love me? For what? How comes you love me? For what? 
When you love me so much, I distance myself because you are a suspect. My team will tell you, when you give me a report, <laughs> I don't believe the obvious. Say, Dad, it's obvious, okay. It's obvious because you are a layman. But for us in, in intelligence, the thief does not need to break a door to be a thief. What if the thief is in the one in the bed? And the break of the door was just a diversion. But the thief is the one in the bed. So when you say thief, thief, daddy, wake up, we arrest a thief. I say we go together with you. Hold the hand. Because I may be chasing the thief when you are taking the money here. <laughs> when you so when they told me the obvious and they said this one got a mental illness and they decided the, the sister to take on the marriage and my first question was the time span from the time this one got mental illness and now that this one is getting married what's the time and they said five months I said thank you Jesus I said thank you Jesus I told the cousin who took me Nakato is the witch he said no they are twins I said okay let me prove to you I'm going to pray for her going to get delivered. If the other one is innocent, the wedding will take place. If she's responsible for this, this will happen to her on, that, on the day of the wedding. So we prayed. I told her, I've prayed for you. Get in my car. We are going to the reception where your sister is marrying your husband. She said, She will kill me. I said, How do you know? Said, she said, I know it. I said, Okay, let's go. 6 a.m. Nakato was mad. And she confessed. She said, she used to go home to the sister's marriage and she went to a witch and the witch told her what to do to destroy this marriage this baby one day she was washing and normally every time she's washing she removes her ring and put somewhere the sister stole the ring took to a witch Offered sacrifices, she became mad. No, 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 no. And then manipulate the man. In months, the whole family supported her. Family so that day she's confessing. So by the time we arrived, the family was in shock. She was saying, I did this, I did this, I did this. And so we arrived. And the Babidi could not believe that what she has gone through her twin sister they were in the same womb they took the same breasts they ate the same food they lived together one was wicked another one was good that's why I'm telling you everyone is a suspect Everyone is a suspect. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying this. And, and I'm telling you, if you have this mind, the mind that everyone is a suspect, the obvious is not obvious. You know that? Because common sense is not common. <laughs> Do you know that? That common sense is not common. And the obvious is not obvious. You do not, you may think the enemy 
enemy is the witch on a hill but they all were the witch in the bed in the bed do you know how many women are sacrificed by their husbands that every time he comes to you he's giving a sacrifice to a demon and they told him you can only be rich if that woman is sick and that sickness is to make him rich and he's, he's your husband every time he falls sick he buys you a new car <laughs> but and you can suspect he loves me so much he cares you never know you don't know Tomani. He is offering a sacrifice. I've seen many children when they don't believe that their father sacrificed them. Their own father. Their own father. And you know, one day I told a man it was a family meeting. I said, I don't waste my time. Tell these children what you did. He said, nothing. I said, sir, I'm a pastor, I'm a man of God, but I'm a former witch. He looked at me. I told him, have you ever been to a witch doctor? He said, yes. Call your witch doctor. And ask him about a boy called James Kawalia. Then you know who is talking to him. He picked a phone. He called a witch. He said, do you know someone called James Kawalia? The other one James said, Kawalia. that boy is dangerous. <laughs> Where have you got him? He said, he's the pastor here. He said, what? Who told you to call me? You're stupid. You're stupid. You're stupid. Why do you bring me trouble? <laughs> he said, why did you call me and talk like that name? Because most of these which is in, in East Africa. East Africa. Most of them I had trained them. As a seven year old. Most of them. So when you mention my name, say, don't bring trouble. <laughs> He's troublesome. Last night I arrested 28 of them. Last night I had an, a mission here. And I arrested 28 of them. You will see them coming here. Including some in your bloodline. Including some in your clan. Who had followed you here. Even some from the waters. Who had followed you here. I arrested or I asked them. How do you come to consecration center? So I opened a prison for them and I put them there. Including the one who blocked your conception. Including the one who, who scattered your wealth. They are now in a prison. They are now in a prison. I might talk to you. So I told the man. I'm not going to do anything. For your, for your, it is for your good. Tell these children what you did to them. He looked at me and said, Can I tell you? Can we go somewhere and I tell you? I said, Don't you, need to tell me. you tell your daughters what you do. And he said, Now if I tell them, will my wealth remain? Wealth. I said, I can't, I don't know. I can't assure you that you will remain rich. But one thing, your daughters will be free. And you may die also. I said, now what can I do? I said, tell them. He said, okay. Let them sit in my car. I said, no. 
You can take them in your car. You want to kill them in an accident. You are now a suspect. You have to sit in my car because you are under arrest. What you want to do is sit in my car. And these girls sit also in my car. And I said, what do you want? I want to tell them something. So we drove and went to a sudden hill there in Rakai and, and he had put four graves and each grave well done and each grave had a name of the daughters she had raised four graves and she, he could go to that grave those graves every 70 days and sleep on each grave seven days and this one could not get married and I said why did you do this he said, for my wealth, I married them. My daughters. And it was, Leah, I married them. And I had to keep my mar the marriage, I have to keep them in these graves. And I said, okay. You married your daughter to the graves. You know, when the Bible says, I will ransom you from the power of the grave. You know that scripture? Is it, is it Hosea 13, 14 or 14, 13? Uh, 13, 14. I will ransom you from the power of the grave. I will ransom you from the power of the grave. Are you getting me? Blood battles. There are, there are two things that always are common in our lives with our, our, our relatives. Our blood and our burial ground. You know that? Families are joined by blood. Families got And then if even if the times you are far but the only time you come together is at the body of glory, at the grave. So the power, the blood battles are fought at the realm of the graves. The power of the grave. Can you give me the King James Version? The new king. I shall I will ransom them from the power of the grave. And I will redeem them from death. I will redeem them from death. I will be your plagues, O grave. He is addressing grave as an entity. He's addressing death as a being. God shall judge any grave that has been incited against your destiny. May God judge the grave that's responsible for your misery. May God smite the grave that's responsible for the bondage of your son. The Lord shall ransom your son from the power of the grave. You know, what we call addiction, mental illness, is the power of the grave. The soul has been trapped in a grave. The soul is trapped in a grave. And that's why someone has mental illness. Mm, someone said today, the Lord shall judge the power of the grave that has detained my marriage that has detained my children say in the name of Jesus the power of the grave detaining my ministry the Lord judge you now it's not a simple prayer by the way it's a serious prayer you did know that why the reason every time you were to take another step in your life at the age of breakthrough someone dead appears to you if you are observant the cycles from the time 
a dead brother, a dead uncle appeared in your dream. Your life turned. Things begin. And that because someone incited a grave over blood, someone with your blood, to fight your destiny. Someone incited a grave of someone with your blood. So your blood is using the power of the grave. And the grave has one assignment to kill and destroy. Am I talking to somebody? And you see that from that time, marriage, ministry, children, whatever you do. There is a shadow of death over your life. There is a shadow of death over your ministry. And people say, You mean all along there has been a church here? We have never seen it. And you've been there for 10 years. But the people do not even see a church there because there's a shadow of death. Are you getting me? You can be in a place and every day they're asking you, oh, welcome. You are a new member and you tell them I've been here 10 years. Say, but we have never seen you. Why? A shadow of death from the power of the grave. Ah. A shadow of death. Because your soul has been taken in the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow of death. On your life, on your ministry. It's always incited from, the, from, from, from your blood. Am I talking to somebody? Are you hearing me? a shadow on your life even your own father always forgets your name always forgets you are there he buys every clothes for everyone and says oh I'll buy him next Christmas I had forgotten about you because there's a shadow there's a shadow of the grave that's what the Bible says the people that were sitting in darkness under the shadow of death a great light has come to them a great light has come to them a great light has come to the people who sat in the land of darkness under the shadow of death. What, do you know that scripture? Isaiah what? Oh, you don't read your Bible. Look at this. Mm -hmm. But there will be no groom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought unto contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light sworn. Amen. Now people say, why are you ready? Isaiah chapter 9. <laughs> I thought you, you studied your Bible. So a shadow can be upon someone. You know, the scriptures say that the evil, I'll, I'll break the covering on them. On that day, I'll remove the covering that has covered all the nations. So a nation can be under shadow of death because leaders keep sacrificing to the graves. I have seen even people in church go to graves of men of God to receive money 
mantles. Why do you want to receive mantles from a dead man? There was an incident in this nation a witch who people thought was a prophet who came in Uganda. By that time I was a witch. We were, we were in agreement with him. He came in Uganda. He started a church. Men of your pastors went to him for power. Even when he died, they fought for his underwear. Your pastors in Uganda here. They fought for his clothes. Some even went and fell on his body. I was a witch by that time. I was with this man who you called a prophet. He had come to stop a revival. And most of your pastors are his disciples who you call great men. And they have never repented. Bring the grave inciting the grave over the church in Uganda. Many of your pastors have never come out to repent when they covenanted with a witch. They took his hair when he died because he had to be buried here. And when he died, they keep going to the grave. They took his fingernails. They took his hair. And they are your pastors. And you follow them. And they have never renounced those powers. Or from those powers, that's how they build their ministries. I warned them that the time is going to come. I'm going to say these things publicly. I have given them time to come out publicly and break that covenant. But they say, ah, no, no, no. I asked them, Pastor. Okay, you renounce the man. But the, his underwear, which you buried in the church, have you removed it? Because they took underwears from the dead man. His hair, they bought land and built churches on that. And today, you run there for your deliverance. The spirit of that witch still over the land. And I've been warning these men. I say, you hate me, you attack me. But them, you were not there. I was in that council. I was in, ben, in, the, in the Benin City. I was there in that council where that man was said, go to Uganda. Stop, stop the revival. Go and, and disciple the pastors. And when he came here, most of your men of God went to receive anointing. And he's the one who told pastors yeah, to sleep with girls in church oh. to generate power. He's the one who told them yeah, that they have to have a, a virgin to sleep with her inside the church, in the church premises, in order to keep the ministry. And they still practice that. So the land is under his shadow. You try revival. You fake revivals. You fake moves of God. What, sometimes what you see what your pastors are fighting for those battles you see their battles are not what you hear what they're not it's not that they are battles somewhere else the battle of you, you, one went to another one's altar and stole something by the time he can walk up this man had sent his boys to steal the underwear and now you hear the battle in the media you hear the battle on radio it's not about what they are talking about the battle is somewhere else somewhere else it has nothing to do with homosexuality and what it has nothing to do with that the battle is somewhere else and they know it and they know I know. They know it. But they can't tell you why they're fighting. The battle is somewhere else. 
You know, when you are going to your altar, and you find your enemy coming from there, no, sir. <laughs> and you thought you were going there alone, and you are coming, and you find a man is coming, no, he passes sir. you no, sir. No, with something in the court. <laughs> You just know he has taken it. You know the the Esau Jacob battle? By the time Esau came, Jacob had taken it. That's what's happened in the church in Uganda. Someone say consecration. Consecrate yourself. And be quiet. Consecrate yourself for Siriki. Where are we? And you know required. how for years you have submitted to such spells. And you look at your children. You look at your life. You look at your marriage. And you say, but I love God. I submit to an anointing. But what I see in my life, what I see in my family, is not, why is it that the prosperity is only for the man? Only. But the rest all are under a shadow of poverty. Go ask ask him, Papa, where did you sell us? Eh? Where did you sell us? You have told us about the blessing, about the great God. But in our children, in our family, we don't see that. What's going on? The shadow. The shadow. You know, there are places whoever came with money became poor. There are places you can't keep money five years. You come, you get it, it disappears. Your man of God goes higher. You, you go lower. <laughs> I will say something one day. Which will open your eyes. You need to ask. Your sons. Why are they not marrying in the land? What, what is in the land which you know? You know what a man told his son? Don't marry the women of this land. Go back to my people. Because he knew what was in the land. Okay, back to what I was saying. I will ransom you the church in Uganda from the power of the grave. I will ransom you as a family from the power of the grave and I will redeem you from death. I will redeem your children from the power of the grave and they shall prosper. The people will be shocked that your three daughters have married in four months and they will ask you how did you know how did you break how did you remove, remove the limit that we had put upon you and you tell them I learned consecration regardless of what men say I learned two things which are principles of consecration number one I learned to covenant myself to the Lord Number two, I learned to lay down my life for God and God alone. What are the two principles? 
Number one, Isoka. covenant yourself to God. Wewe Learning to covenant and live in covenant to God. Because many of you, you covenanted yourself to your pastors. You covenanted yourself to men who you do not know which altar they subscribe to. You do not know which altar they subscribe to. But you've covenant and this is what I'm telling you. For complete deliverance. For deliverance that remains. There must be a valid covenant. Between you and God and God alone. A valid covenant. Today you're going to break all attachments. And say I choose to covenant myself. Covenant my life. To God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And him alone. Stop calling. Oh the God of my father. Do you know the God, God of my spiritual father? Do you know which God is serving? Are you sure he's serving the true God? Are you sure? Are you sure still in the service of the true God? You better now be Kana Kambata. You know Kana Kambata? And, eh? You know the, the ducklings? The duck? They take care of themselves. Where we are now. Listen. A time has come. To ask God. Not which demon binds you. What is the demand of the covenant? Listen. They are intercessors. But God is calling covenant intercessors. Covenant intercessors who have covenanted their lives to God and are living by that covenant and are fulfilling its demands. Are you getting me? I was talking about uh, Genesis chapter 4. About, about, uh, about their battles. And Cain, Cain killed his brother. But he did not kill the blood of his brother. Hmm? Did you hear that? He killed the, the brother. But the blood did not die. The blood kept crying. And cried. Even the days of Noah. That blood was crying. And God told Noah, by the way, whoever sheds blood, I demand blood. That blood will remain. Crying. Hmm? And when you look at the sons of Cain, Lamech and others, Nimrod and others, you could see a blood crying. Because God told Cain, the ground that has opened his mouth and swallowed the blood of your brother now will grow thorns and thistles. It will not yield her strength to you. You shall be a vagabond. You shall go and go and your children keep going. Because the blood will keep chasing you from the land. The blood will keep chasing you. Chasing you. Chasing you. I think you see what's happened to our children. The land is vomiting them. 
If you go to the airport every day, you will see a generation being sold in slavery. Young girls, young boys. Many of you people, you are selling your land to send your children to foreign lands. And you think you are giving them a good life. The land is vomiting them. Because of blood. And he appears, oh, my, you know, my daughter, my, my son, hey, is, listen, when they return, they will come with the defiled blood. When those men rape them in those nations, they are accessing blood. There is a story here in the Bible of Perez. You know Perez? Hmm? You know Perez? Perez in the Bible? The battle was in the womb. You know Jacob and his brother? Where were they fighting from? Don't tempt me to shout. Jacob and the brother where did the battle begin before they were born they were in a realm fighting Jacob was not the first time to wrestle to wrestle with God he had also wrestled with his brother as a cell in the womb the, the battle was in the womb I want to encourage you. Every one of you to buy at least three copies of my book Freedom from Bondage of My Father's House and keep them some people you don't need to preach you give them the book one of the topics in that book Battles of the Womb the womb is not a physical realm. The womb is a spiritual realm where lives are formed. Hello? The womb is not this uterus. The womb is a spiritual realm. Do you know that? And one of the things that, that come from that realm is the blessing. The blessing comes from the womb. Doesn't come from the blood. Blessing does not come from the blood. The blessing comes from the womb. It's only a curse that comes from the blood. But the blessing. You know when someone asked me. Why didn't Isaac withdraw? The blessing he had given Jacob. Jacob had already received the blessing. Because the mother. Had said. A curse be on me. So Isaac, Isaac is giving out delegated blessings. Because according to the principle of the spirit, the mother had blessed Jacob. Isaac was confirming Isaac what the mother had decreed. Do you know that? Let me give you a scripture. Genesis 49. One of the spiritual giants that found the Bible. One of the men who understood spiritual transactions. As a child, even as an old man. Is Jacob. Don't joke with Jacob. If, if Jacob was in our days, he would have been a very good witch. He understood spiritual transactions. From home. He's trading. From the womb. He's trading. Are you getting me? 
from the womb he's trading at home he's trading he goes with father in law he takes all the wealth he's trading am I talking somebody that guy Jacob was an entity a unique entity who walked the earth I don't know what they are the woman knows what she gave back in the womb the boy was fighting he said he can't leave me he can't go without me because if you go you will be a firstborn we have to share the first we have to share the birthright. Oh, oh, birthright you know, we are born the same hour, same minute, same second. We have to share the birthright. Oh, oh, birthright you know, the war was in the womb. So he understood all his life. He's a man who meets angels. He's a man who heaven opens. He's a man who has to, who changes even how the ship are formed. <laughs> now, <laughs> the you, you get it. He can change the color of the sheep and the goats according to what he wants. You are talking about the te technology. This one, one. This one was unique. He could change the color. You know, people think that people cannot change someone's sex. The one was supposed to be a girl born a man. And a man Omsaja. born a girl and was just changed. It's done. Chikolewa. But someone can say that woman, every boy she will conceive will be born a girl. And so you are a girl but you are a boy. And when someone marries you, you become the husband. You pay the fees. You build a house. <laughs> you take care of everything. And the one who is supposed to be the husband is enjoying being a wife. <laughs> you dig. You roof the house, you pay fees, you buy his clothes, you feed him. Because there was something that was exchanged. Blood battles exchanged you. And your father could say it. My daughter, you are supposed to be a man. You would have been my heir. And you think it's a good thing. The transaction was done before. That whatever, and I've heard this. When people say, Me, I'm a boy in a girl's body. Don't, say, don't take that light. It has a deeper spiritual issue. What we are dealing with today is that girls feeling boys and boys feeling girls you go just week sin ask yourself where was the manipulation where was the exchange ask yourself how was the conception what was the trading when was this girl exchanged was she supposed to be a girl or a boy that came like a girl and how do you undo that It's not by passing laws. I, oh, we have the law. The law does not change that. It's a spiritual transaction in the blood. That, that change. That brings redemption. Ah, my, my friends today are very quiet. Hello. 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 What's going on right now? Hello. 
<laughs> Have you heard about stories or documentaries Documentary. switched at birth? Have you, have you watched those switched at birth? How sure are you you are not one of them? Switched at birth. But there are those switched at conception. That spirit was present. At conception. A seed is taken. And replaced by another one. And the woman conceives. But has conceived a different seed. Switched at conception. Switched at birth. Their children you look at when they tell you you are the father but the child wants to beat you daily and you say but this child who wants to take out my tooth what is the source Maybe of this an alien was present at that time as a husband at a time of conception you slept a little by the time you woke up but you've been with her and you say wake up by the time you wake up this one is signal. In the second when you doze, an alien caused conception. And when you count your days as a woman, exactly you, you are with your husband. But there was a time when there was a sleep. When there was a dozing. And another seed was infused in you. I think we better get a break. <laughs> Are you getting me? And you wonder why your father who they say is your father has never loved you all his life. There has never been a connection with him. Why that man hates you? And he's your father. They've been switched at conception. These are deeper things. Principles of conception. Consecration. Switch that conception. This wickedness of switching. Even wives are switched. You ask Jacob and he tells you. <laughs> Even wives are switched. You may have a wife who has switched for 10 years. You, you say, but this. The one I saw, but when on the wedding she was a different person, she was switched. The body remains the same, but the soul was switched. Have you ever seen someone who loves you dearly and sudden turns? As if he's never loved you? And you did nothing? Said, are you the one who loved me? He, the, he may have been sweet somewhere. Your wife can be switched. After three years of marriage, your, your husband can be switched after five years of marriage. And you're saying, This is not the man I married. This is not the one. The caring, the loving, the, the best. These are two different. This is another being. Who switched my husband? Who switched my wife? Even your children. Your child was born normal. At three, he was switched. 
He was talking. He was okay. Suddenly he became nonverbal. Suddenly he became silent. Now he shut down. And he was switched. And for you, you call it autism. Your son was switched. That's not the son you had. That's not the daughter you had. There was a switching. Who switched your son? Because I, you are sure the one you have is not the son you got. We gave birth to a good, normal child. Loving. Functioning well. And suddenly, you got another, saw another child. After five years. After four years. Switched. Switched. And an alien soul was infused in. But because an alien soul is not compatible with the spirit, that's why there's no, emo there's no more emotional attachment. There is no learning. There is no connection. And you say, what's going on? Who switched my son? And where is my real son? Because I know there is an alien soul Soul. in my daughter in my son and a switching happened someone switched my daughter someone switched my son the last time I preached to you were so lively what's going on today this issue you need to, to address. Your husband may have been switched. Now it's as if he doesn't have a brain. That man was creative. That man had a vision. That man was doing well. But now even a simple thing he cannot do. It. A simple problem he cannot solve. It. That man was switched. Who switched my sweetheart? You need to ask that question. You need us right now. Who switched my son? Who switched me? Who is this in me? Because this is not me. This is not me. There was a switching. When you left that hospital, when you were sick, when you fell unconscious, you woke up another person. When you went in that night prayer and something was done, you woke up another person. Some of our people, they went nations. When they returned, you received another husband. You received another wife. There was a switching. Some of our spiritual leaders are experts in that. They switched. They switch as people. And they give them an alien soul. Which they can control which they can bind which they can put in a prison God bless you who switched you don't you think we need a uh, Transaction this afternoon. Because the cry of a mother. Someone switched her son. Someone switched her son. Mm. 
that girl the twin I was telling you switched and the sister got mad for her she was going to a marriage switching what is running in your mind now what's running thank you god bless you oh ashes ashes sorry What's going on in your mind? Cry to God and say, Who switched my son? Mm. Sorry. God heal you now. May God heal you. It was not just a coincidence that that happened here. God bless. Now, I don't know why you are giving, by the way. <laughs> but I know what the Lord is telling you, but I will receive. Who switched? Who switched your husband? Can you lift your voice and say, Lord, I ask son back. Who switched my son? Who switched my life? who switched my ministry and gave me a failed ministry and gave me a failed soul who switched me on an evil grave who switched my son your husband may have switched your son in, to the occult. Eri occult. Sorry, sorry. Can you just talk to God right now? Ask that question. Who switched my life? Who switched my life? Who switched me? When you ask, it will be exposed and disarmed. Who switched my life? A prophet, a father, Tata, an authority, and who switched. Cry to God right now. Who switched my life? Who switched my life? Who, switched my life? who, switched my life? who did that? God bless you. God bless you so much. Come on, you, oh, sweet. I, I don't know what transaction you are doing. What you are giving. As the Lord has come. Ashes, ashes. Ashes, ashes. Rabroko Satarari. Masia Rabaradi. Ashes. There are many people that were switched. Sad that we are switched and something's happening right now. She cut out. Some people in this room right now. Lift your voice and pray. Who switched your marriage? Who switched your brain? Who switched? Who switched your brain?
who switched your brain who switched your brain as I ashes come here come here who switched this man who is using his moon who has taken his star who switched his star today I end that trend I end the time now who switched him who switched him to turn him into a slave from a hair to a slave who did that it's not just a sickness your organs were switched everybody pray who switched my son who switched my ministry who switched my voice and pray you can even come to the altar you can even fall on the altar you can yes. your position Ramakatara <laughs> The shame is over. The shame is over. In this family, the three of them are siblings who are switched. The Baba Ramanda la Ramanda la 
ba di dia robo zega da 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 la la ne la ne la ka di dia robo zika ra ba di dia ela ma ne la ba ka di di sha da 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 li di di sha da 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 li 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 sha da 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 li 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 Rapa Riva that lot of Jesus ransoms you Hola Mandela Kadida whatever trend whatever switch Hela Bagadia de Jidia Riva Baba 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 Zeya zeya zey makaya kada da da zeya zeya zey meke ya rabadi di di zeya zeya zey makaya rabadi di di riba ba 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 la kande malala kande la makasi la makande lezu kiti la makande la makada da da riba ba 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 la kadi di di raza kaja la rabadi di di robo zi kaja la rabadi di di rezi kiti la makaja la rabadi di di riba ba 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 riba ba 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 riba ba 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 landa la zi kaja la landa lo zi kaja la landa lezu kiti Robo 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 Robo
era bine bisatu biri no kubanga bikola mbula mubo ero ino kutukiriza bisatu che bibanda so i want to draw a, a triangle on, the, on, your, on a piece of paper njagala mu kitabo chawo okubeo triangle and the base of the triangle kati wansi wayo write down the altar wandika echoto and now on one side write the alliance and on the other side write the anointing so the base is the best principle of consecration is the altar if you do not if you have not understood the principle the dimension of the altar then the consecration will not work because consecration must, must bring out power there must be results out of your consecration and we all know the source of spiritual power is the altar and the altar produces power so gates and thrones depend on the power from the altar. So I, I wanted to draw that triangle. Now you have the altar. And I want you to draw two pillars below the triangle. One, call it gates. One, another one call it thrones so you have two pillars above the pillar there is a triangle the base of the triangle is altar one side of the triangle is alliance another side of the triangle is anointing so you see it's above the gates and the altars we, and that's the pathway of ascending that's the path of ascending on the, uh, on the base One you have the gates and the thrones but over them there is the source of power so the altar is on them but also on the altar through the alliance and through the anointing it's like an arrow ascending into realms it's like now when you look at what you've drawn you have an arrow do you have it? you have like a, like, like a rocket are you getting me? Do, do, is that the image you have? you have like a rocket like an arrow there is anointing here. There are alliances here. There is altar here. There is gates here. There is thrones here. That's the graph of consecration. That's the graph of, of, of consecration. And now, below the graph, what we call the shoulders, that's the governmental power, we, which is now redemption. Leave everything is fine. I'm fine, please. Thank you so much. I'm fine. My sound is good. Don't perfect it. You just mess it. It's nice. I've learned to adjust. <laughs> Amen. When things are good, I, I, I celebrate. When they are bad, I thank God. So everything is fine. <laughs> the glory of God is here. <laughs> now, you find now where we have the base now, <laughs> the last base now, <laughs> where all stand the foundation so what's the foundation? It is Christ. It's Messiah. And, and we could see now on his shoulders on his shoulders what do we see? 
on his shoulders. We are seeing now gates and thrones from the shoulders but on the base up there we have the altar and from the altar we have the alliances and we have the anointings. But the foundation is Christ. Are you getting me? Now, if if I, for example, if I stand like this, and the shoulders, there are gates, and the side they what? I want you to see the base as Christ on the cross, and see on his shoulders ascend thrones. Are you getting me? On his shoulders ascend thrones. You know your Bible says Bible. to us a child is born as a son is given and what does it say the government shall be on his shoulders rulership so the thrones are on his shoulders sustained by him and the gates are on his shoulders but for them to be firm they need to be joined by power which is the altar. Are you getting me? Which is the what? The altar. Now, when they are the, the, the thrones and, and the gates are put together in agreement because of the altar, what do we see? Godly alliances joining with anointing and now that causes a man to ascend and he not into the realms. So what you have now, you have the graph of consecration. Are you getting me? That's the graph of consecration. I call it the principle of consecration. You must understand alliances. You must understand the, the, the laws of alliances. The laws of anointing. And the law of the altar. And then the law of the gates. The law of thrones. And the law of the altar. Now what do we see? At the tip of our graph, we see the spirit of the Lord. So in other words, you're going to now try to, to navigate through the graph of consecration. Through the seven spirits of God. The seven anointings. So we see the spirit of the Lord on top. And now that the anointing and the alliance. If you go to Isaiah 11, you will see the anointing and the alliance as spirits how they manifest in the journey of consecration. Now, if you look at it, they shall come forth as a shoot. A shoot. You see a shoot? Hello? Hello. You see what? You see a shoot? And what do you see in our graph? A stamp. A stamp of Jesse. And what do you use? And say the branch from his roots shall bear fruit. Verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Who? Christ. Christ. So on the tip of the spirit of the Lord. Where we have alliances, we have the wisdom and we have understanding. And where we have the altar, we have the spirit of counsel and might in our agreement. And on the shoulders, we have the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. But all from Christ as the root. Amen. Amen. 
Am I confusing you or I'm blessing you? Now, every time you talk about consecration, you're talking about that graph. Each element of that graph has to finish its work in your life. The last time I preached, you were saying amen. Each element of that graph has to finish its work in your life and bear fruit. Sometimes it may take a year or five or ten or two or two depending depending on your faithfulness and your covenant. Let me say this. One of the things I'm looking at in the, before the next consecration camp is identifying covenant intercessors. Not just intercessors, but covenant intercessors. Because intercessors have different ranks. Those which I call covenant intercessors. They are the only one who can be faithful and fulfill covenant praying. I have been teaching about covenant prayer for years. And I have not found people we can do it together. And I have been asking the Lord why. And the Lord says it's not a matter of coming together. Each one of them must have accomplished the journey of being a covenant intercessor. Must have fulfilled the requirement, the sacrifices, the submissions of being a covenant intercessor. Where God says, for your nation, I'm covenanting with you. For Uganda, I'm covenanting with you. For Botswana, I'm covenanting with you. Now the covenant intercessors become the ecclesia of the nation. They become the council of the sons of God in the land. Because they have gone through all these elements. They have gone through the elements elements of the gate. They have learned each one of them has accomplished its work in their lives. So through this graph of consecration they are able to disarm principalities dislodge strong men break curses establish government in other words they begin to manifest the spring be spiritual being called faith. So faith is no longer an, uh, an element. Now faith has become a person in them. Faith has become a person. It's not, an, it's not a substance. It's not what they do. It's a person in them. Faith is now a being they talk with. A being they interact with. A being they meet, they go together. And all these you see, each of them has its characters which now grows in you. And listen to this. Tell your neighbor, consecration is character. Consecration is not power. Consecration is power that comes from a character. Power under control. Consecration means refined power. Power refined out of character. Godly characters developing in a man. It's my prayer that you begin to pursue 
These elements. I don't know at what stage you are. Are you at the stage of gates? Or the stage of thrones? Or the stage of altars? Or the stage of now? Manifesting anointing. And now coming in alliance. And in agreement. With the divine assignment. Then together you ascend. I can tell I have left some of you. Why? You came for donkeys. Now I'm giving you thrones. Like, I came for healing. Now listen. Healing is, is not a healing is what comes out of your consecration. Wealth that comes out of your consecration, the enemy cannot steal it. Did you hear what I said? A marriage that comes from your consecration, Lucifer cannot play with it. Hello? Am I talking to someone? You know why you say the devil has taken, the, the, the locusts have taken my husband? Because the, your husband did not come from consecration. He came from your feelings. He had the right height. <laughs> eh? And he said, this is a hunk. I'm going with this one. And he didn't come from consecration. Your husband did not come from the altar. It was not a result of the anointing. Let me ask you. What did that man see? To say I love you. What did he see? He saw your beauty. So when your beauty fades, what happens? His love disappears. But if you saw the anointing, the anointing will keep increasing. And every day will be saying, will you love me again? Will you marry me again? And you've been married 30 years. 40 years in marriage. And your husband wants to propose every day. Because what keeps him around you is the beauty of the anointing. It, no man can leave an anointed woman. No woman can run away from an anointed man unless it was fake. Anointing is beautiful. You know marriage is an alliance. But anointing must be there to, to support it. In fact, when you see your husband going to another woman, just know the anointing disappeared. When you see your wife, taken by a shamba boy. Bishop, just know the anointing disappeared. Who can touch the wife of the anointed? Who? Because the anointing itself is a hedge around a man. I wish I can teach someone something. As an intercessor, when you put a hedge around the man of God, that was his anointing. Are you getting me? So when the enemy scattered you and, they, and the, the, you were not putting a hedge around him what left it's not you it's the anointing because the hedge around him that was his anointing you say it 
intercessor who put a hedge around him that was the anointing on him so the anointing is about the hedge around you around the man of God he could serve and minister and perform miracles because of the hedge because of the anointing are you getting me the anointing is a hedge are you learning something when you see a thief in your marriage the hedge was broken there is a breach the anointing was defiled that's why the husband is taken that's why your son is taken that's why your daughter is taken because it's the issue of the anointing something went wrong I don't know if I know the right word in English but in my language some people who know English help me I don't know it in, I don't know it in English. Eh? Uh -uh. You know, something so eh? People, Luganda people help me so I can teach it to people who don't know Luganda. Aba sumba banyo Luganda mnyambe ko. Ama futa gantondo. Sensitive. Eh? Ah ah. Aba sumba saba gani? It's jealousy. Now, now, listen. Those, who, those of you who grew up in the village there used to be a plant a plant when you touch it you know that plant now this one who grew up in state square they don't understand what about but you know that plant you touch it what is it in English? What is the botanical name of that plant? <laughs> what is the botanical name? Eh? <laughs> okay, what is the scientific name? Okay, the English name. The anointing is We have a teacher here, senior teacher. Pastor Henry, come and help us. And your students are here. This, this is this was your lecture, not so. Oh, yeah, lecture. Uh, now today, <laughs> I, 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 I will interview. Is it done? I'm so uh, teacher. Teacher. I am teaching people. So, so the so. anointing. I'm a footer gun tondo. Some after gain tondo. I'm a footer gun tondo. The anointing is. <laughs> I'm a footer. I, the pastor said it's picky. I got it picky. Get on that. Get on that. No, that's the Memosa. Pudika. Name we have any of you or me? I am the pastor. We must money. Never but the money. If I don't know, you also don't know. Never try to know better than your boss. You will lose a job. When the boss says, "I don't know," even when you know, you say, "I don't know." Otherwise, you begin to you threaten his position. Okay, I said the anointing. Unlike the, unlike gifts, 
Anointing is sensitive that any small thing it withdraws. Any small thing it withdraws. I have ever seen I've ever been in a situation where the anointing withdraws. I prayed for someone who the Lord did not want me to pray for. A man who was in a wheelchair and got and, and, and was healed. The man got healed and I felt the anointing withdraw. And I knew and I went home troubled. The church people were celebrating. I asked the Lord, what's going on? The Lord told me, I've just lost a soul. That man you prayed for, he is healed, but I've lost him. That man died after six months. And for six months, he did not return to the church. He was so busy because God healed him. And for the man, for me, it took me three years. Three years, the anointing had been withdrawn. Three years, I was pastoring. You know those moments when Sunday morning is like a, you are going for, 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 for punishment. Because you know you're, you're empty. You just wish someone would visit and you give them a pulpit. You just wish it rains and people don't come to church. Because you, the anointing is not there. That's when you come on the pulpit and you become a comedian. You come with fun. You just make fun and people laugh. You bring stories and you bring this. What was in the news? What is on TikTok? What was said? And someone is going over. No revelation, no impartation, no, no nothing. You have the gift. You can talk, but the anointing was withdrawn. Are you getting me? You go in with that woman and you know you've left the anointing. You leave that bed. You are still the pastor. But the anointing has left. And now you are naked. But you're still preaching. And let me tell you, before, when I was in the other world, that's when we could attack not the naked man the people under his authority all the people in the church is dying marriage is breaking business dying but the one who has lost the anointing would keep him in office because now he's a gate into those that submit to him so for him you don't, they, you don't touch him. In fact, he makes sure he gets all that can show he has an anointing. The money, the people, the cars, the land. So every people think, oh, the man, look at the things. But now because the anointing left and he's naked, then what happens? You give him, they give him a garment, a garment to kill that whoever looks at him something dies in that person because they submit to a naked man that was put on a, a garment of evil a garment of abuse a garment of insult a garment of immorality a garment that offend others because the anointing left the first thing to leave when you sin is the anointing. And the, if you're a man of authority, the devil will leave you in authority. Actually, he will make sure you maintain your office. Because it means your office is a gate to hell. 
Because now Christ is not there. Now he's replaced. The gates of the Lord have become the gates of hell in your life. Now you don't, you are no longer accessing Christ. But now you are accessing the devil. It's because now the gates of hell are empowering you to destroy others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You understand where, where I am now? What's come into your mind? Consecration. Someone said consecration. You know, the things I'm teaching you can help you discern when to run from a defiled anointing. Because it's not just a man that has fallen. No, it's a man now being empowered by gates of hell. Because he's no longer in the pace of consecration. The moment you stop consecration, eh, you risk the anointing being defiled. And remember, it's speaking as the word. Yeah. They're not, even what you eat. You know, even you can eat something and withdraws. You can go to a place and it's gone. Hmm? The gift is there. And the office is there. And that's the danger we are in today. Eh? When as men of God and women of God, we stopped consecration and began pursuing titles, ministries, or pulpits, and, the, and we left the anointing at the place of consecration. And what has become our churches? Conference centers. Co centers are, are conference. Concert halls. What has become mm -hmm. men of God? Motivational speakers. Only. Now business consultants. And now we have a business, a business concept of ministry. Nothing supernatural. Nothing godly. No transformation. But worst of all, souls are destroyed every day. Because now the gates of hell are empowering you. And the people are still looking at the gift and the manifestation of the gift. But the, the innocent around them especially the children are now perishing because their mother or their father is in alliance with a defiled anointing hmm? so the alliance with a defiled anointing keeps taking people in the realms of darkness and those under them the children and others now are blocked because their blessing is from their authority who happens to be you but instead of getting the blessing you are in alliance with a defiled anointing which has become demonic so the blessing does not come what comes so every time you go to church and the defiled anointing ministers to you at home, home you take a curse and you serve it your children and you serve it your house and generations to come or years to come you ask I raised my children in church. Why are they in addiction? I raised them in the church. Why are they not married? Because of the defiled anointing which you have alliance with.
I don't know why today I came with deep stuff, hard <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Even me, I'm wondering, why do I come with this? <laughs> but if I don't say them, your life will be on my head. The Lord will say, James, you knew all these things. You did not teach my people because you feared to be misunderstood. But now that I'm teaching you, it now your, your life is not on my head. Hmm? You can deny, take it or leave it. But I'm teaching you the, the principle of consecration. And the enemy will always want to, cause, to come and have alliance with you. So that your consecration is cut short. I know people who began consecration. And before they finished, a blessing came. A door opened. Not every door is opened by God. Some doors are doors of hell. Not the doors that open and you shut them. Yes. There are invitations that come and say no. Because the, what listen. And this is very important. The strategy of the evil one always to defile the anointing is to, to entice you and move you from your place of authority. And you begin to minister out of jurisdiction. Hmm? Out of what? Out of jurisdiction. Hear me. Some people say, as men of God, when I am not in my church, the power of God is mighty. But when I am in my church, the power is not there because you are defiled. Because you are defiled. Why you know, I'll say it again. Because you are defiled. Why you know, so you are on hired anointing. That's why on another man's altar you perform. On your, in your altar you don't perform. It's like men who are so good to every woman except their wives. Because their soul are captured. They help everyone except their house. They bless everyone except their homes. They bless everyone in church but their children are dying. Because he's defiled. Are we here? Are we here today? Oh, we are not here. Ask neighbor. What alliance are you in? Are you what alliance? What anointing have you agreed with? Is it still anointing? Or is it anointing going through consecration? You don't know. If you don't know, go deep in your consecration. Go far. In your consecration. One of the things that you see. Evil. Defiled alliances. Will begin to reject you. In some places they will call you a witch. Because you are consecrating yourself. In some places. They will warn people about you. And they say you are super spiritual. Why? 
Because you are breaking, they are breaking alliances. You are cutting off connection with defiled anointings. But those anointings was because there was a substitute of the altar. They've not heard what I've said. Let me teach you spiritual things. It's easy the altar to be substituted. It's the altar but it has been substituted. Any man you bring on your altar, if his altar is not the altar of the Lord God you serve, they may be a substitute. And that altar may trap all the souls you surrender to this man. When I say come and preach pastor, I have submitted all the souls to that man that hour and to his altar. If his altar is an altar of witchcraft or pride or, or, or arrogance or fornication, everyone under me and those that will be under me I have surrendered them to that altar you know this business when we bring uh, for musicians who are, who, are, who are living in sin in fornication but because they have a few gospel songs and we, because they, go, they get these their powers from altars. And when they come on stage, they come with the altar. They come with the altar. On stage. They come to play the instruments, to play the drums, to play the guitar. It's their altar that is playing. And because you the authority, you have sold the people to that altar. Even if it's one song, it's done. The reason I sit and watch our TV, the people that will my team will tell you, I normally call them sometime in the middle of the night say, remove that song and sometimes they know why because for them they just if the, day, the song has something like God and it's like godly and they don't understand the storm one day they were playing this, this song from an evil, an, an evil altar. Many of you have been singing those songs. You raise me up. Huh? You, you, you sing it. You play them. Where is Jesus? Where is God in that song? The storm is over. You know where the altar it came from? You know the musician? You know who, what he serves. You know who he does. You know the children he sacrifices. And you sing it in church. And you say, you raise me up. And say, who raised you up? Who? Who? For you say Jesus. But who sang? From which altar? Who was he telling? <laughs> you know how many altars sing in your life every day? And you receive them from church? Hmm? <laughs> I will tell you some of this things, but let me leave you because you may stone me. Because, but we are in consecration. Actually, you are going to change your song list. Hello? Hello? 
You are going to change the things you listen to. Because you are in your consecration. It's not a song. It's an altar talking. It's an altar. Huh? And you need to silence it. But because the authorities have allowed such altars to minister to people. Many destinies, many lives are destroyed every day. Every Sunday morning is the day many souls are destroyed. Sunday morning because they bring altars. They want playing the guitar. Last Saturday was in the bar. They want playing the keyboard. Was playing in karaoke. They want leading worship. Was a backup somewhere of a satanic altar. So what's happened now? An alliance of altars are on stage, leading you in worship. Huh? An, an argument of altars. It's different altars. Recently, one day, one of these days, there was a meeting, a big meeting in a certain nation. And men of God had gathered together loving and they were, oh God God do by the things. I was watching. And a man from a, an altar, an altar that is defiled, and a high altar was announced as he paid some of the bills. And they said, This man has given this money and we bless God for him. And I said, My God. They have lost it. They will have to wait another 70 years. They have lost it. They have received the $200,000. All the men of God could not discern an altar has taken over. The revival was going to begin in that nation. An altar that had been receiving human sacrifices for years and while that at altar was being judged and being exposed in the media and government that altar rose and offered to the men of God and the nation lost it where were the intercessors <laughs> That's why we need we need a, a complete overhaul. We need a new church. Passage has gone. Wali. We need the new church. The church of the remnants. The church of the remnants. The church of the covenant intercessors. Who can see who can see beyond the, 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 the machine, the, the screens and say, wait a minute. Man of God. Don't receive that sacrifice. You've sold the soul of a nation. That one transaction sold that nation to that altar. That one transaction. The fathers could not stop it. And they knew they know that altar. But because of the money they sold the soul, the revival of a nation. And they let that altar pay the bills. And what will happen? You will look at their marriages years to come. Their first sacrifice will be their wives. They will begin dying. 
and each one of them will be replaced with a woman from that altar who will become the, who will become the wives of the pastors. You see, in a few years, most of those pastors will have new wives replaced. Because how do you know that, that a man is the unknown has been defiled? The wife is taken. Another one is placed in his life. And that's irreversible. <laughs> I think we need a break. You, you need a break to breathe. No, I say you need a break to ponder. Ask these three things. Buza, no, Saba. Number one, it's okay. to break the evil alliance in your life. Say, Lord, I ask to break and the, all the evil alliances in my life in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I ask to break the evil alliances the evil alliances the evil alliances even in my bloodline in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I don't hear you say Lord Jesus today break evil alliances the second thing you're going to ask cleansing cleanse me cleanse me from all defilements cleanse me from whatever defiled me blood of Jesus cleanse me from all that defiled me blood of Jesus cleanse me say Lord I ask to break all evil alliances in my life I don't hear you say Lord 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 I ask to break all evil alliances in my life all evil alliances all evil alliances all evil alliances in the name of Jesus cleanse me from all that defiled me cleanse me from all that defiled me cleanse me cleanse me cleanse me cleanse me Cleanse me, cleanse me from all that defiled me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I break all evil alliances. 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 I break all evil alliances that entangled me in blood covenants that entangled me in blood battles in the name of Jesus Lord cleanse me from all that defiled me in the name of Jesus first lift your voice and pray those prayers Zagaradika 
Zade Kara Rakataya Zara de Dea Zara de Dea Shikatadaya Shikatadeka Zekata Tekaya Sala de Katados Zekara Dosea Zala de Dea Radara de Kata Rikara Dosea Zagara de Dea Ritara de Dea Shana de Dea Shiara Babara Dea Shiara de Katadea Shikata de Katadea Riketa de Katadea Rikata de Kata The Lord shall reveal The Lord shall expose Evil alliances The Lord shall show The defilement That which defile you That which defile the altar That which was substituted That which substituted Shagada Katagadea Legada Mozendike Lagada Gota Bradaya Legete Keta Brada Magada de Katia Jagada de Kate do Sedia Ragada do Shetea Magata de Kata Fire of God Fire of God Blood of Jesus 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 Sword of the Spirit Break the Alliance Break the Alliance Break the Alliance Zagada de Kata Jikata de Kete Rike Retarana Rike Ratea Magata de Rika Dabos Zagadete Rike de Kata Shada Burade Zekete de Jikata Doya Rada Rade Shiara Barad Shara de Rea Shata de Kata Rike Tadekas Sala de Kotaria Rike Rika Rados Zekete de Keta Shata Brokose Zada Rea de Zara de Rete Zara de Rea Makata do Seria Santa de Cassia Zekete dia Zikarados Zikata de Zekete de Zekata da Riketa dos Sala de Reta Zikata dos Sala da Rade Rikere Kata Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Fire of God Blood of Jesus Sword of the Spirit Break the alliance Break the alliance Cleanse me Break the break the alliance and cleanse me Break the alliance and cleanse me Break the alliance and cleanse my soul Cleanse my spirit In the name of Jesus And the streamer of anointing Be cleansed today let the stream of the anointing be cleansed today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the stream of the anointing be cleansed today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus, sword of the spirit, fire of God. Break every evil alliance in my life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus, cleanse me from all that defiled me in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the stream of the anointing be cleansed. Let the stream of the anointing be cleansed. Let the stream of the anointing be cleansed by the blood of Jesus, by the fire of the Spirit of God, by the sword of the Spirit. Let the stream of the anointing in my life be cleansed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus, cleanse me from all that defiled me lord i ask today break all evil alliances in the name of our lord jesus christ the evil alliances i ask lord break them today those in my life in the name of our lord jesus christ in jesus name amen amen sit down now this is another very the last one is important and you want to take it slow the third thing is i seek to covenant my life 
to the Lord God Almighty. Someone say, I seek. I seek. I desire. I seek to covenant my life to the, to the Lord what? To the Lord God Almighty. Gog is a demon. Someone said to Gog. Type error is over which he ended it. Say, I seek to covenant my life to the Lord God Almighty. Now, that's the highest transaction you can do. And in the next one hour, I want the people that are saying I want to covenant my life to the Lord God Almighty starting now now are there people that say I want no, no one is going to force you no one is going to lay hands on you it's a personal transaction and you say I want to covenant my life to the Lord God Almighty not just a follower that I may be a covenant intercessor that from today I want to covenant my life all my life to the, and this is not just um, a prayer you are now on that trading floor and you're saying my offer starting today I am covenanting my life I am covenanting my life. Friend, this is not a, just a simple prayer. This is not a pastor laying hands on you. This is not a conference. It's a transaction. And you never forget this hour. You never forget this hour. It's the time of the... We are approaching... We are in the time in the watch of the evening sacrifice. And blood battles, whatever we're dealing with, this is what determines them. Covenanting your life. We reflect covenanting your life. Sit down, sit down. And I want to first think what's going to involve. I want to have a dialogue with the Lord. He wants to tell you what it will take. And he is waiting until you agree and say, okay, okay. Okay. Listen. Last night I had an assignment. And it took hours. The Lord saying, I want you to covenant your life to me again. It showed me the assignment of one night. And he said, The requirement, you're going to covenant your life again. And I was going to say, Yes, Lord. And he said, No. First, sit down. And I want you to search yourself until you say, Lord, I've seen this. Because we're going to ask me, what if it will involve not being with your wife? What if it will involve your children? What if it will involve this? And you can show me different areas of my life. And I'm there engaging with him. I'm engaging and engaging. And I felt so heavy. The thing to say, will you give me that one? Will you give me the next 900 days in the church without going home? Will you stay there? Will you give this? Will you give this? Will you do this? Will you do this? And for hours I'm engaging with him. And I felt it was so heavy. And later towards morning, 
for the release in my heart I said I covenant my life now because I, at that time I knew what's going to involve covenanting a life to God and when I said that he said now go for the assignment he said every assignment I will remind you that you covenanted your life to me and he said when you go to the next day I'll do wonders in the meeting. I'll heal my people. I'll deliver them. I'll bless them. But after, call them to covenant. Call them to covenant with me. It's not for everyone now. Not for everyone who is excited. It's for those that are saying, after years and after years of being before the Lord, on this day, I want to covenant my life to God Almighty. I want to covenant willfully and I know what it means. Somebody say, I know what it means. Say, I know what it means. I know what it takes. I know what is requiring. You know, he's going to use you for the nation to turn the nation. But the condition is asking for a covenant. Huh? Where is worship team here? Worship. We're going to take two, whatever time, to get to our good day. for before the Lord. To go so come, come. No program now. Program, no preacher now. No sermon now. You are covenanting your life to God before the assignment. One more time. Oh God. One more time. Whatever happened, it's not the issue. There's a woman, there's a man here. It's time to say, I'm covenanting my life. I may have messed up, but I'm covenanting my life to the Lord, God Almighty. From today, I live not on my own. My life is not my own now. I just I want the Lord to take over now. I seek the Lord to take over now. I seek God to take over now. I seek God. Even ushers. Stop the ushering work. No answering. Whatever people are, whatever God is doing in their lives. Now it's you and God. Even pastors. Even pastors. Covenanting yourself. Because this is very important. Covenanting your, your life this hour. On this day. On the third day. Of the call camp. He said. James, don't proceed. Stop until they have covenanted their lives to me. Stop the activity. Stop the preaching. Stop the programs. I want a covenant with them until they covenant their lives and say, I'm ready to carry the cross. I'm ready to, to live a covenant life. Is there a man doing that, saying that? The woman saying that no performance. Stop praying. Stop praying. I don't know what prayer. I don't know if you come to the altar, whatever you are, whatever you are, it's you are like Lord God. This is the deal. It's covenanting my life to you. This is covenanting my life to you. I'm covenanting the rest of my years. The rest of my years now. I want to covenant to God. And, and you go before the Lord, wherever you are, we may not be able to fit here. You may be anywhere and say, I want, I'm covenanting my life, the rest of my days, the rest of my years, the rest of all that I desire. I want covenant with the Lord. 
if the older he is, is not, you can be wherever you are. And fall before the Lord. No one is performing anything. We have all the time. Even if we go through the night, keep engaging until you, the transaction is complete. Keep, keep engaging until you have put your life as a covenant.
is not my life is not my own to you I belong I give myself I give myself Jesus my life is not my own
nothing, nothing. With holding nothing. Come and take control. With holding nothing. Give my children to you, Lord. My ministry to you, Lord. My will, my purpose. My will, my blood to give to you. With holding nothing. With holding nothing. With holding nothing. With holding nothing. With holding nothing, with holding nothing, holding nothing, Holy Spirit, with holding nothing, 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 with holding nothing.
come and I will climb where you are is where I wanna be we need to come where you are Is where I wanna be. Moji fochi. When I go to sink, Moji fochi. When I love it, I really can. Moji fochi. When I love it, I can't. Sabato si sinca ne moji fochi Moji fochi ri Wenna kuzi sinca na Moji fochi ri Wenna la vida curelica Moji fochi ri Yeah.
Cleanse my 
to the holy take me into the holy of holies take me in by the blood of the lamb take me
like wine for you to drink Like water from my heart I pour my love on you If praise is like perfume I'll lavish mine on you Till every drop is gone I pour my love Like oil upon your feet Like wine for you to drink Like water from my heart I pour my love on you if praise is like perfume, I'll lavish mine on you till every drop is gone. I pour my love like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink. Like water from my heart I pour my love on you If praise is like a few I'll lavish mine on you Till every drop is gone I pour my If praise is like a few, I'll lavish mine on you till every drop is gone. Yeah. I'm
praise the name of the Lord. Um, it is okay for those if you want to still be here. Uh, you can still be here if you want to take a break. You can take a break and let us all be here. Now it is 10 minutes to 5. So let us be here, all of us, by 5.30 and we we'll start the evening session. Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay. Feel free to take a nap, to take a rest, to walk around, take a drink. And, and uh, uh, if you're a minister here, uh, kindly, let me request Sarah. Sarah, stand up behind. Please stand up. All of you go, ministers, ministers who have been ministering, kindly go and see her for a brief communication. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you at 5.30. Instrumentalists, it's okay to keep on playing till tomorrow. Oh, oh. 